Hello and welcome everybody to this new video. My name is Silas and today I'm on the amazing quest of finding out which operating system has the best installation process. We're going to put many many Linux distros and Windows head to head in this pretty silly idea of the ultimate installer showdown. Now, which are the contestants in this? And how did I choose them? Uh, well, basically I chose them by going to Distro Watch and I just looked at like the top 10 and basically randomly picked some where I thought they wouldn't use the same installer. That's it basically, and Windows 10. Not Windows 11 because I made a whole bloody video about Windows 11. Whoa, my God, what's happening now? Don't say hi, just fucking give me the desktop. Go watch that later, after this one. That's a great video. So which Linux distros did I randomly choose for this? We have MX Linux, Endeavor OS, Linux Mint, Debian, and Fedora Workstation. Because I think those have very distinct installation processes. And uh, put your complaints in the comments, please. And how did this get tested? Well, basically, I just set up a virtual machine and virtual box with always, with all the same components, with 6,000 megabytes of RAM, 50 gigabyte disk, because that was what VirtualBox recommended for Windows, and then I was like, I want to have the same conditions for everyone else. Six core processor, and I also downloaded the newest ISO images of that OS that's being installed, and I downloaded them all at the same time, basically right after another before filming this. So we should have the newest versions already in the ISO. Or at least the newest that they distribute. Now how do I plan on ranking all of these? I'm going to see how long it takes for the system to be installed and by installed I mean when it's usable and when all the updates are installed. Every OS now will start off with 100 points and we will it'll take points off of that score depending on how many times you have to enter something, how many prompts you get, how many times the system has to restart itself because that's annoying, if there's any missing updates and one minute of install also equals score minus one. That means we'll end up with Whatever is closest to 100 points will be the best installer of this comparison. I hope that's pretty clear. I don't th I think it is. So let's get into it. Let's start off with something that's pretty nice. On MX Linux, it didn't really ask a lot of questions. It just installed it. It asked you what I think is a pretty reasonable amount. It asked for terms of use, desk partitioning, installing a boot manager, some networking things, localization, setting up accounts, and also a screen where it said like reboot it now. That's basically it, that's all the input prompts that I gave. Not that many, It's I think this is pretty reasonable, that's pretty good. It, it also only restarted itself once, but it did have to install a few updates, although that's it wasn't very much. It was like four updates or five or something. I think this was pretty pleasant. This was pretty easy. The whole thing took six minutes and that's pretty good. Okay, you know, I just realized that the shitty graphic that I made for the scores, it doesn't even have a space for installation minutes. So <laughs> I'm too lazy to make a new one though. So let's just keep that in mind that in the final score also the number of minutes is already taken off. <laughs> I have 10 subscribers, so it doesn't matter. Next up is Endeavor OS. For no other reason other than I randomly chose this one to be next. This one has a few more prompts. It asks you online or offline install, your language, your location, your keyboard settings, disk partitioning, which desktop environment you want, if you want any other packages. It lets you set up users, shows you a summary of what's going to happen, and after it's installed, a restart prompt. 
it did have to install three updates. Three packages needed to be updated. That's not zero, but that's pretty good. And the whole thing only took eight minutes. It was just slightly slower than MX Linux. So this one I think was pretty good as well. Next up is everybody's favorite Linux Mint. Probably gonna get some comments for that. And this one wasn't too bad, but it's, it was worse than the others, I would say, because it only asked for language, keyboard, additional media codecs, disk partitioning, location settings, and setting of user accounts. That was good. That was, that was pretty good. That was actually the least amount of user input prompts from any install so far. And yeah, that's pretty good. The thing where it falls flat is it ha it needed to install a lot of updates and also it kind of did a Windows thing where it wanted you to restart to install all of the updates so you could download them and like press install but then eventually it came up with oh please restart it now. That took forever so it ended up, it ended up taking 20 minutes for me until the whole system was uh, up and running with all the updates. So that's a score of 56. It's not that awesome, but it's also not, not the worst thing, as you'll see. Now it is time for Fedora. Fedora's pretty good, yeah, so I chose the newest beta build of Fedora 36 for this. Mainly because this is just a silly video, it's not absolutely serious, so... Comments again, hate me now everybody, this is my channel, I can have fun in, in whichever way I like. Fedora wasn't that bad to install, it has this weird kind of hub style installer, but other than that, it's it was pretty straightforward as well. It asked for language, and then it showed you this this wizard kind of... Thing, which I also counted as an input prompt screen. Then selecting your keyboard layout, selecting your disk partitions, setting time and date, and then after you've restarted, it asks you about a privacy, your privacy settings, if you want to use third-party repositories, connecting an online account, creating a user, and also setting your password. After that, it shows you oh GNOME 42 tour. But you can just press no on that and then that's it. So I didn't look through that because everything where you are not forced to do it, I'm I'm okay with it. But every menu item or every new screen where you are forced to do something, I think that's annoying. So have less of them. <laughs> Other than that, it also needed to install updates. Logically from this being a beta build of 36. It had a lot of release candidate software on it and not final versions, so all of those got replaced. And I don't know why they do this, but Fedora also install updates Windows style where you where they get installed when you restarted. I don't know why. I don't know what kind of benefit this has. I just think it's annoying. Um, but okay, fair enough. It wasn't that bad. It's the score is just one point less than Linux Mint. This whole thing took 16 minutes and uh, yeah, it, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Now the last Linux distro is Debian 11.3 and Debian is pretty good. I think most Linux users know that Debian is a great Linux distribution. However, what I personally think isn't that great or user-friendly is... God damn, the bloody installation process. I think that's... that's horrible. <laughs> this is the kind of thing which is great if you really, really know your way around computers. If you give this to a random normal person uh, that uses a computer to like check the email and go to Twitter or something and then that's basically it. I don't think most people would really know what this all is. I'm not saying they have to simplify it completely but just like god damn people guys just like make a simple mode or something. Well anyways it it asks you to input language, location, 
keyboard layout, host name, domain name, root password, full name, username, user password, partitioning, five times, five different things for partitioning, or scanning for additional packages, selecting your package manager country, selecting your package manager mirror, selecting an optional proxy, agreeing to statistics or disagreeing with them, selecting your desktop environment, installing Grub, the boot manager, two times, and then it has a restart prompt. That is very many annoying single option screens, which I don't think this should have. Maybe you can like regroup them. Why does, why does host and domain have to be its own pages? Why does full name, username and user password have to be separate pages? There's many things where I think this is not that optimal. The positive things are it only took 13 minutes, which is pretty long, but it only restarted one singular time and it had no updates to install. So that actually gives it 59 points. I think that's pretty good. At least in this weird shitty ranking system, it is pretty good. And now that means if you look at our graph now, MX Linux with 73 is the best inst has the best installer. That's that's nice. That's awesome. Followed closely by Endeavor with 68, and then you get Linux Mint. Do you get Linux Mint? No. Then you get Debian, 59. How is Debian ranked higher than 56? That just shows you how shitty and stupid this point system is. I'm gonna rethink this ranking system if I make a new one of this. But anyways, you've seen the Linux installation experiences at least. Um, so you could kind of say screw the ranking and just look at the installers. And also, there's still Windows to come, Windows 10. So let's see how well that's gonna do. <laughs> Now for Windows 10 I've decided to do something a little bit different here and by that I mean I'm just going to show you the whole process of how long it took to install and fully update this system. You're gonna see me play around with like task manager and the settings of it because it just took really really long to get all the updates but um, I think this footage speaks for itself. 